and welcome to Maths at Chertsey High. My name is Mrs Willoughby, I'm the second in the department and my responsibilities are to look after maths in Year 7 and Year 8. And hi, I'm Mrs Kilby, I'm Head of Department and I look after maths in Year 9, 10 and 11. What we're going to start off by talking about is who else is around besides myself and Mrs Kilby in the maths department. There are nine of us in total, some of us teach just maths, some of us teach other subjects as well. You may be taught by myself or Mrs Kilby, but you could well be taught by one of our other teachers. Um, so one of the things we wanted, we're trying to do is think, if you would have been here with us today, what would you want to know? What would you ask? So we've tried to come up with some questions and answer them for you. So um, what do I love about my subject and why do I like teaching it? Well, what I love about maths and about teaching maths is that every lesson is different. I come into every lesson and you never quite know what's, what problems we're going to meet along the way, but you can guarantee that you leave every lesson knowing you've achieved something if you've tried your best. And for me, that is a great day when I've learned something new in every single lesson in every day. So that's why I like teaching maths. I don't know if there's anything you want to add, Miss Willoughby, to why you love maths? Um, yeah, for me, maths is magic. It's an actual magic trick. So you can ask a question and you might not even realise you're asking maths. So it That's can. <laughs> so when we're looking at problems in the world, quite often they come down to us counting them, to us quantifying them. And what I love about maths is that moment when you're in the classroom and you hear what I call the maths noise, which is when a child goes, oh! That's what I love about that. That moment, no matter what the topic is, the thing I love teaching the most is algebra. Yeah, don't but because I think algebra is yeah. magic. That's my favourite thing about it. And I think the things that we've just talked about lead on to what we see as our vision in the maths department, really. Why maths at Chertsey High does what maths at Chertsey High does. And that's because not just is it fascinating, because it is, it's amazing, it's fascinating, um, and it's fun to do, but it's a life skill. Not just because you might be, and, 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 and Mrs Kilby's going to talk about this later for careers, you might be an accountant, there's all sorts of things where you're going to use it very obviously in your day to day. But you're all using it in your day to day already. If you're 10 and you're watching this and thinking about coming to join us here at Chertsey High, or if you're quite a bit older and you're a parent watching this and interested in maths in Chertsey High, whether you're doing your household budgeting, whether you are buying a carpet and you need to know how big that carpet's going to be, whether you've been trying to understand what's happening in this coronavirus world and you've been listening to things about the R number, it's all maths, it's all over in our life. And that's a huge part of what we want to instill in our vision in maths here. It's about building a fundamental life skill that we will all use. It's about building a passion for a subject above and beyond that. And it's also about taking you to places where once you have that maths GCSE, it opens so many doors for you. That's what we do here and that's why Mrs Kelby and I are passionate about what we do in maths here. Um, so we have five, we like to talk about the five stages of the maths here at Chertsey High. So we sort of break those down into the five years. So um, Mrs Willoughby, tell me, um, if I'm new, a new pupil coming into Chertsey High, what's maths going to look and feel like in year seven and eight? So maths in year seven and eight, like maths in the rest of the school, we talk about something called mastery. It might be something that you've heard about either if you've spoken to other schools or it's a word that appears in the press quite a lot now when we talk about mastery. And that often gets attached to this idea of how they teach it in China and Singapore and that's just not what we mean. What we mean is really understanding what a number is and what we can do with it. And that is where we base all of what we do in Year 7. Starting by saying, what do we mean by a number and what are all the things that we can do with it? Now, for a lot of us, that's going to sound like addition, multiplication, division, etc. etc. Of course, that's where we start. But we very quickly start moving that into what that means in terms of algebra. So numbers we don't know or might change. And they're, as you'll know, represented by letters. We do a lot of that in the first term for Year 7. And then we go deeper and we start saying, what do we apply that in? And that's what mastery means. We understand it very deeply and now we can do more with it. And we really focus on that in Year 7. When we go into Year 8, we're going further into those applications. So we want to know a little bit more about the tricks that we can do with triangles, which link to our algebra and our maths and the tricks that we can do with other areas of maths like using graphs, 
what can we do around that area that demonstrates our understanding of number and algebra and takes it to further applications. And that's really what it's about for year seven and eight, giving us that absolute basis so that we can take it to the next level, year nine and beyond. I'm sure another question that everyone's going to want to ask is, will maths be set? Yes, yes. Maths is set at Chertsey High from very early on. I agree passionately that it's the right thing to do. To get the most out of our maths, we need to be able to support everybody and we need to be able to challenge everybody. And we have to do that in a way that's individualistic. It has to be appropriate for the individual child. Some children are going to move at different paces at different times. However, everybody does the same topics. Okay. So the pace might be different. The depth we go to on some of the topics might be different. But what we teach will always be the same. And do the sets change? Constantly. Constantly. We learn at really different paces. Where you're at when you come in in year seven versus where you'll be at in year ten is not necessarily a straight line path. It moves all of the time. So we use the data we generate, we're going to talk about testing in a minute, but we use the data that we generate to look at students regularly throughout the year and say, are they in the right class for them now? very much and so um, so what happens in year 9 and year 10 and year 11 obviously everyone takes an exam in maths at the end of year 11 um, but how do we get from that mastery approach in year 7 and year 8 where we've built the foundations into everybody getting a really good GCSE well year 9 is very much seen as a transition year um, so we take all that great knowledge and depth of understanding you've built in Key Stage 3 and in Year 9 we're starting to increase the difficulty, increase the depth, starting to apply some of those skills a bit broader into data, number, algebra, maybe we'll start working with thirds, we start factorising quadratics, so some of those things that I know you can't wait to start, that all happens in Year 9. And then in year 10, year 10 is the big GCSE year. It's the year where we cover most of the curriculum for GCSE. Uh, so don't think you can leave maths to year 11, you can't. Every year is equally as important to your GCSE in maths. Year 11 is where we get you ready to take that exam. We want everyone to do as well as they possibly can. So that's about linking topics together, finishing off bits of the curriculum, but lots and lots of preparation and confidence boosting to get everyone ready to do the best in that GCSE maths exam. We do two GCSEs. We do um, GCSE is still streamed in the UK. We have a foundation or a higher. Uh, so you will be doing different schemes of work in year, in year 10. In year 9 everyone does the same topics. In year 10 we will stream you differently, but we promise we won't take a decision on what exam we're going to enter you for until the last possible moment. So right up to, you know, as late as we possibly can is when we will decide whether you will enter for the foundation, GCSE or the higher, because the overlap is, 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 is great and we want to enter you for the best exam to get the best grade out of it that you can. More of GCSE later though, it's a long way off, but there is a plan and the five year steps definitely all builds towards everyone doing well in that final exam. So every student in the school gets an hour's worth of maths homework every single week, but we split that down. So we do two every single week of 30 minutes. We make sure that that's useful practice. We promise you that will not be finish off something from class. It will be what your teacher has chosen as the specific set of questions that are right for you to really develop the depths of, of understanding and build your memory and your recall in that work, ready for building on to what comes next in your lessons. And that homework often will be revision. Yeah. So when we're coming up to a test, you won't have homework in addition to revision because that's what we'll be revising right now. So we integrate it very much into what we do, but it is there and it is expected and there are consequences if you don't do it. And what if I can't do my homework? What are my options in Year 7? Well, the, the options in Year 7 are the same all the way through because I, I, I want you to succeed. That's my job. That's why I do it. That's why I show up every day. I want you to succeed. So we have homework club as part of the school, but we also have specific math support sessions. So every single week for every single year group, there's an evening set aside where you can just drop in. You don't even have to sign up. You can just drop in. There are maths teachers available. You can use it as your homework club, really. You could just sit there and do your homework in it. That would be fine. But what a lot of students do is 
is they come to us because there's a specific topic, either on the homework or what they were working on in class, and they want to talk to a teacher and do some more practice with someone who can directly support them. Um, the other thing I was going to ask about, um, do we ever have homework online? Do we have any online access? Yeah, we do, thank you for reminding about that. We have a couple of options that we use for that. One of the main ones we're working with at the moment is a programme called MathWatch, which I personally love because of yes. the number of things that it does for us. So it has questions hosted in it and we will assign those questions to you. But what's amazing about it, as well as that flexibility of being able to do it at home and um, at school with access to the computers, but more than that, it has videos in it. So every single question you'll be asked in it, if you're stuck, there's a video immediately under, underneath where you just run through that video and it runs through the, the process and the method again for how to tackle that type of question. So it's like having a teacher in your dining room, wherever it is in your house you're set up doing your homework. It's having a teacher there ready and supporting you. It also marks it for you, which is a huge help for you to know how you're getting on because actually the most valuable sort of practice isn't to do a load of work and then hand it over and walk away from it and say, oh, I've done it, because that's not a point of homework. So the point is to, to learn to develop the depth of understanding. So if you've done a question and you didn't get it right, it immediately tells you and you now need to know that you need to think again, where was my mistake? What do I need to change? Which we know from many, many studies is some of the most significant type of learning. Getting it wrong is really powerful because it should all, we all get things wrong. I get my whiteboard's over there. I get things wrong on that whiteboard all of the time. Every student I've ever taught will tell you that. Of course we do, we all do. Yeah, we make mistakes all of the time. And that's one of the lovely things about MathWatch because you can make the mistake and then you can immediately go, what do I do next? Once we get further up the school, we've also got something called Active Learn yeah. that we work with that's tied to our GCSE textbooks. And sometimes work will be set alongside that, which is very closely linked to the GCSE content that we're doing. Yeah. So certainly um, we find for GCSE maths, being have access to those online computer systems have really helped you with your independent study and learning. Uh, so we definitely do will introduce that in year seven and eight because it's so important to GCSE as we come through later. Okay, so we just want to talk about what we expect of you in a maths lesson. We don't ask for a lot. All we ask is that you come to every maths lesson excited, ready to learn, with the right equipment so that you can do your best. There is never a problem getting something wrong. As Miss Willoughby and I said, we get things wrong, everybody gets things wrong. The secret of maths is being brave enough to just to have a go at everything and learn from your mistakes because that's how you make the progress and actually that's also what gives you that that real boost that I was talking about that you leave the lesson thinking I couldn't do that wow I can do that now that that's the excitement of maths is yeah it's meant to be hard sometimes and that's the fun of it when you then when you then you then, uh, master it or challenge it uh, so that's what we expect of you in maths from some practical point of view, yes, we love it if you turn up with the right calculator, whiteboard pens. We use mini whiteboards ever such a lot in our maths lessons here at Chertsey Eye because basically they're a way of doing things without not worrying if it's wrong. It's not going to be in your textbook. You can do it on your whiteboard. No one else sees it by you and the teacher. And then we rub it out, we have another go. And then when we're really confident, we go into our books. So. Make sure you've got your mini whiteboard pens and your mini whiteboards and your calculator for every lesson is really important in math. So that's, that's all we expect. Turn up being positive with the right equipment and you'll, and you'll hopefully enjoy maths as much as we both do. Yeah, and I think that open-mindedness that you're talking about feeds in so much to how we run maths yeah. lessons. So you've talked about the whiteboards and we will often ask the whole class a question and then everyone holds up their whiteboard so that we can see we've written. And that tells us as teachers yeah. how many students in the room have thoroughly understood so far and what we need to do next in our teaching to make sure we've got everybody there. But like you say, it's it's a way of being able to be comfortable with being brave about showing where you're getting in class. And we encourage that in other ways as well. We want people to talk to their partners, sat with them about the maths they're doing. Sometimes we'll set things up so that there are group discussions, particularly those problem solving lessons yeah. we're talking about early on. Because actually sharing your mistakes is really powerful. It's a really generous thing to do where you can, where you, yeah, yeah. sometimes I talk about my favorite mistake. So what's, when people hold up their whiteboards, it's kind of like, what's my favourite mistake in the room? And, and because actually we're all now contributing to someone and we use a lot of those kinds of techniques in maths at Chertsey High to say, we're all, we're all approaching this ready to make mistakes. 
that's really normal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I was living with paddleboard last week. Yeah. I fell in a lot. <laughs> we approach life ready to make mistakes, and maths is no different. Maths is no different. So we want people to come into the classroom with that attitude and share how they are learning and where they went wrong and what they learned to do as a result of it, because that's such a powerful thing, not just for me to tell a student, but if you're helping your friend in that way, that's a, such a powerful way of learning maths, and you really want to encourage that in Jersey Hub. And I guess lastly, um, the other thing you might ask is, why do I need to study maths? Everyone has to do maths. Maths is involved in almost every job. But if you choose to study maths beyond GCSE and study at an A-level or a degree level, you know, some of the specific things that you really need an A-level in maths or a degree in maths for, if you want to be an engineer, if you want to be um, an accountant, an actuary, if you want to go into science, probably in any level, um, business management, sales and marketing, almost endless opportunities. Math teachers. Uh, math, math teachers, um, <laughs> business studies, anything that you think you might want to do. A maths a A-level is often quite a mandatory requirement for that. Um, but you'll, you'll get lots of time to think about that and explore that while you're here at Chertsey. Okay, we look forward to seeing you all soon. Is there anything else, Mrs. Bullpelly, we've missed? No, but uh, nothing I can think of. No. If we but have missed anything, though, I'm sure you'll email us. Yeah, absolutely. Our details are on the website. Yeah. Please just drop either of us an email and we'll be delighted to answer your personal question. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us today.